Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. You're watching Market One Minute. Joining us today is David Cates, President and CEO of Denison Mines. David, let's jump right in and talk about the advancements that Denison has made, specifically with the flagship project, Wheeler River. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It's really been two and a half years of engineering work and, and our geological team contributing to a, an updated resource estimate for the project, now the largest undeveloped project in the eastern Athabasca Basin. In 2016, uh, we took a look at how that project might work as two deposits being developed together with a, a PEA or a preliminary economic assessment. And uh, in the last two years, we've taken that result, which is really uh, you know, a scoping level, uh, stress test type study, uh, to see how we can maximize the, the project. And, and where we're at now is we've just, just completed a pre-feasibility study for the project, really trying to leverage the super high grade Phoenix deposit. Well, David, can we talk about the highlights from uh, your recently announced PFS? Well, the PFS is actually quite dramatic. Uh, we, we were looking at the project before as two underground mining operations uh, with our Phoenix and Griffin deposits being developed together. What we've done now is we've really looked at how to maximize that Phoenix deposit. Uh, we're now looking at it as an in situ recovery uh, project. So we'd use ISR mining for Phoenix. Uh, and that, that's, that's quite a dramatic change. And we've taken Phoenix from being a sort of a marginal deposit to potentially the lowest cost uh, undeveloped uranium deposit globally uh, with costs estimated under $4 US per pound. You know, Griffin's still a great addition to that. Uh, we're adding additional pounds under $12 US per pound on OPEX. Taken together, we've got something like a 14-year mine life with average production over 7.5 million pounds. So it's large scale and, and now we're really positioned not only as the largest undeveloped project in the Eastern Basin, uh, but also probably the lowest cost project globally. Yeah, it's interesting that you chose the ISR mining method for Phoenix. Now, can you explain the ISR mining method and how it works? Yeah, ISR mining, it's, it's really something that's well established, uh, particularly in the uranium business, uh, represents over half of production uh, today, uh, being used globally in, in the United States, Australia, Russia, Kazakhstan, these are all some of your lowest cost producing assets in the world. The way it works is you're basically mining the uranium while it's in the ground and you're not taking it out of the ground unless it's in your, in your mining solution. So you drill a well into the earth, you, you, you move a mining solution through the ore body and you recover it through another well without having to get underground and actually blast or, or move rock. Uh, the big benefit of this is that you're not going to produce any tails, right? All you've brought out of the ground is the uranium through your mining solution. You're not sinking shafts, you're not digging pits. Capital costs are low and we've got very low operating costs. That's why it is a preferential way for mining uh, for uranium globally. Yeah, it sounds interesting, but can you explain what makes Phoenix amendable to this type of mining method? Yeah, Phoenix is unique in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, a lot of this has to do with the, the, the geology and, and the location of the deposit. For ISR, you need, you need a few elements to be going your way. You need rock that's permeable, you need uranium that's easily leachable, and you need to be able to contain that mining fluid. So at Phoenix, our studies and our analysis suggest that we've got that permeability, the leachability is well established, and what we've done now is uh, use technology to create a containment for that mining solution using a freeze curtain or a freeze dome over the deposit. And I know that seems like it's uh, creative. It is in its application, but freezing technology is something that's being used throughout the Athabasca and around the world as an established technology for mining. Well, it's interesting. We haven't heard about the ISR mining in the Athabasca Basin before. Are there many deposits in the Athabasca where this type of mining can be used? You know, there's not a long list. Uh, Phoenix is really unique. It's, it's the highest grade undeveloped uh, uranium deposit in the world and, and it's really the only undeveloped deposit that's situated at that unconformity and highly permeable sandstone. Uh, so, you know, some people have asked, well, why hasn't this uh, been brought up before? And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, there haven't been other companies that have been motivated to solve this problem. Uh, Denison is, is, is positioned to be the next uranium producer and we're really trying to put our assets at the front of the line, be in the pole position for this uranium cycle and we're blessed with an asset like Phoenix that actually is amenable. So it makes a lot of sense that it hasn't been thought of before and, and that we would be the ones to come up with this idea. 
Well, it sounds like there's some very exciting catalysts ahead for Denison, specifically the advancement of the Wheeler project. Now, what are the next steps ahead? Well, our economics look very interesting, even at today's prices. Uh, we're, we're not expecting to have to need the price to rise considerably to really justify advancing the asset. So the next step is, is really starting permitting. Uh, permitting is a long lead item uh, for the Athabasca Basin. So that'll be our choice coming up is uh, do, do we advance into permitting? And, and once we've started that process, we'll certainly have additional studies that we'll have to carry out some de-risking around some of the technologies that we're looking at using. But I actually think that's a really great thing for our story uh, because each one of these steps through the development cycle can be a bit boring. In our case, we're going to have meaningful developments coming out of our project work as we de-risk some of these elements of ISR at Phoenix. And each one of those stands to be a very meaningful catalyst for the stock. Well, David, sounds like some exciting news going forward for Denison. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks, Jim.